That was... <laughs> that was a delectable medley of footballing splendour. That was sensational. That's what we're in it for, isn't it? That was the drug. That was the point. Everything about yesterday was fantastic. It was intoxicating. Football is unrivaled. It is completely unmatched. It produces feelings and emotions that are incomparable to anything else in the world. When your team behave like that, when your team demonstrate that will to win, that desire, that hunger to be the best against a rival in the most toxic of circumstances, nothing will give you that buzz. Nothing will give you that spring in your step. When you are a football fan, and when you think about what football fandom is, it is a commitment. You are effectively constantly just chasing a buzz. You are forever, perennially just chasing that buzz. And this year, as a Chelsea fan, that buzz hasn't come. But my gosh, it hit last night. That was perfection. It couldn't have been scripted better. It was everything that I wanted it to be. A tonic that Chelsea so desperately needed. When Chelsea play Manchester United, there's always jeopardy. It always matters. But sadly because of the circumstances, because of the plight of both teams this season, this has got to be the most inconsequential fixture between the two teams for what it actually represents. In terms of the three points, who accrues the three points, it means very little to Manchester United. They were dreaming of an outside chance of making top four, but I think it was gone. And for Chelsea, Chelsea's dreams of making top four were long, long gone. I personally am dreaming of making some form of European competition. So the three points matters to a degree, but it was... It was a bit of an epiphany. It was a bit of a wake-up call that Chelsea can play Manchester United in April and the game effectively doesn't mean anything. Chelsea versus Manchester United used to decide the title. You know, Joe Cole's back heel, Didier Drogba's strike. It used to decide European Cup finals in Moscow. The less said about that, the better. This game, for a lot of people, particularly for a neutral, I think it would feel uninspiring. But for me, it was perfection. It delivered everything that I could possibly want it to do. It was the dream scenario. It was everything that I wanted it to be. And it reminded me why football is so important to me. There was a period recently with Chelsea where it just felt drab. It felt uninspiring. And there was a predictability to it. It was, it was a horrible feeling when apathy took over from anger. But suddenly... You're brought back to life, and that is the power of the game. What Chelsea did at Stamford Bridge last night was huge. Beating Manchester United will always be important because they're Manchester United. They're the biggest institution in the country, and taking three points off them is it will always matter. But this was something more. This had personal spite. This had edge because of one man, because of Mason Mount. The game actually became about two people. You know, when you think about what happened, don't get me wrong. I thought Alejandro Garnacho was brilliant. I thought Chelsea were good and then terrible and our defence was all over the place. And there were some woeful performances from many players. Manchester United arguably were unlucky. The two centre-halves going off. But this game boils down to two individuals. This game boils down to one loyal, elite level footballer destined to go to the very top, capable of being the jewel in the crown of an England team that are capable of winning Euro 2024 in Germany. A player who has been so good that I still believe that he will win this season's golden boot. A player who has shocked me, filled me with awe, filled me with joy. And the only concern I have about this player is that he's going to be very soon too good for us. How Chelsea, a team who are languishing in mid-table, are going to keep hold of a player, a diamond like Cole Palmer. He is everything. The man is everything. He is so calm. He is so perfect on the ball. He is a wonderful football player. He's taken a club like Chelsea on his shoulders and he is still a kid. So we have him, the king, the current king of Stamford Bridge. Absolutely sensational. And as I say, I believe he will win the golden boot for a team that are going to finish around ninth. That is how good he is. The other man, the other individual, is a fraud, a charlatan, a Judas Iscariot type figure who broke my heart and everyone's heart around him. A man who positioned it that he had to leave Chelsea, he positioned it that it was out of his hands. But then we saw him and his father sitting in the Manchester United dressing room, referring to it as home. We saw the incredibly transparent video that he was so clearly reading. 
when he told us that he didn't really want to leave. And then most recently, which I think tells you exactly who this man is, how slippery this man is, how deceitful this man is. We heard Eric Ten Hag say, no, no, no. Mason Mount wanted to leave Chelsea. Mason Mount wanted to leave Chelsea. Eric Ten Hag, his current manager, came out and said that. In fact, I'm going to read you the quotes so that this isn't mistaken. I'm going to read you the exact quotes that Eric Ten Hag said because the fact that Eric Ten Hag has come out and said that Mason Mount wanted to leave, it was Mason Mount's decision, is incredibly significant because people will always try to say, you know, but, 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 Mount wanted to stay, the ownership forced him out. Okay, let's explore it. Ten Hag insists it was Mount who made the decision to leave. This is the quote. I don't think Chelsea wanted to sell him. They wanted to keep him and offered him a new contract many times, but he wanted to make this step to Manchester United. Thank you very much, Eric Ten Hag. We appreciate those words because what it does is it puts an underscore around the term Mason Mount Judas Iscariot. It italicizes it and highlights it to a level where it is completely and utterly true. So the circumstances of this tin man, a man without a heart, a player so fixated on his own ambition and his father's ambition that he sacrificed everything that he built at Chelsea in order to go for the furtherance of his own career at the time, I'm sure he thought, and the furtherance of the pie and mash in his skyrocket sign for Manchester United. And now as a result, he should be nowhere near the England setup. So you've got Cole Palmer on one hand, doing the business, a sensational footballer, who I believe is putting in performances where he needs to start for England. Look, it's a problem for Southgate, but this is a wonderful problem to have. Find room for Cole Palmer. And if you do that, you will win an awful lot of games. The other player, Mason Mount, who shouldn't go to the Euros, and has frankly been a failure for two years. So... When Mason Mount came on at Stamford Bridge, it was our opportunity to let him know how we felt. And I think Stamford Bridge answered. It restored my faith in the Chelsea fan base. Some of the videos, some of the imagery has been sensational. So fair play to everyone involved. Mason Mount needed to know how we felt. And that was our opportunity to convey those emotions. So I think we did very well there. Mason Mount comes on the pitch with Manchester United winning 3-2. He played for seven minutes. The game lasted for, well, 100 but there were only seven minutes that are worthy of conversation. Mason Mount comes on at 3-2 up and the game finishes 4-3 uh, to Chelsea. That is the dream scenario. Like Cole Palmer scored more goals. He scored more goals in 90 seconds than Mason Mount has scored in 16 months. That is the difference. That is, that is the perfect imagery to demonstrate the difference between these two players. Cole Palmer has scored more goals in 90 seconds than Mason Mount has scored in 16 months. And in fact, Mason Mount, for the first time in his entire footballing career, would have experienced the Chelsea win versus Manchester United in the league. You know, we couldn't beat them, could we? We haven't beaten them since 2017, Alvaro Morata. And Mason Mount would have played against Manchester United a lot in the league. And we never got close to them while he was there. He's now seen Chelsea win. Um, I tell you what, though, where would we be? without Cole Palmer. I don't really want to focus on Mount anymore. Slippery little Judas. There's nothing else to say. And it went perfectly. But Cole Palmer, like, where would we be without him? How good is he? I mean, he has now scored 19 goals and got 12 assists in 36 games. Like, this is unbelievable. You know, I saw a tally for what he has done in terms of the point accumulation for Chelsea. So this isn't taking into account assists or performances or winning penalties or anything like that. This is simply taking into account the goals that he has scored. Winners. How many points are his goals worth? He alone is worth 13 points. 13 points he himself is worth. So if you subtract 13 points from Chelsea's current tally, where are we in the league? Below Palace. That is how important Cole Palmer is. That is how good he is. And I tell you what, when... The referee announced that there was going to be eight minutes of stoppage time. There wasn't exactly a roar around Stamford Bridge, a roar of expectancy. I think the stadium was emptying. People had seen enough. We knew that we were disastrous. We'd seen us play the other day against Burnley where it all went so wrong. We'd seen Manchester United winning. We'd seen Mason Mount come on. The ref says eight minutes, it's time to go. I think that fans are numb, apathetic. And like I say, there wasn't that roar. I think a lot of the old doubts came flooding back as well. You know, we've seen our team give away many, many leads. We've seen our second half performances equal 
capitulation. You know, we often do an okay in the first half and lose the second half. But something was different, and that something was Cole Palmer. 100 minutes into the game, he scores that winner. It was unbelievable. I mean, Manchester United was still ahead at 99 minutes and 17 seconds. 99 minutes and 17 seconds they were winning, and they ended up losing the game. It is a record, obviously, but it's a deeply damaging result for Eric Ten Hag and a deeply damaging result, more importantly, for Mason Mount. Uh, I'm over the moon with it, honestly. It's restored my faith in Chelsea. It's restored my faith in football. Rivalry, tribalism, aggression, the bedrock of football fandom. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I will say cheers to you, Cole Palmer. The king is dead. Long live the king.